worship on this place. You are our Father. You're in the inhale and the exhale. You are Yahweh. You are Adonai. You are God with us. Speak to our hearts today. In Jesus' name we pray. If you love it, put your hands together and give them glory. One more time for this music ministry. God bless you all. Hallelujah. That's Sharon Ann, boy, I tell you. Part hood, part Jesus, working on all of it in between. But I came to Jesus just as I was. No, don't, don't make nobody make you think a Christian looks any certain way. This heart is in the right place. I think he'll say, well done, thy good and faithful servant. You've been faithful over a few things, but I'll make you ruler over much. Are y'all ready for the word of God? So this is a month of gratitude. We're just, we're just talking about gratitude all month. Um, and we had a marvelous 9 o'clock service. Let me tell you, I thought y'all wasn't going to come when that rain came. I saw that rain coming. I said, well, the saints, you know, they're going to stay at home. But you came. Give yourselves a hand. For those of you all online, welcome to our 11 o'clock service. Real quickly, go to 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 16. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 16. We're in the New Testament, going toward the back that way. And um, we're going to read just four verses. And we'll be ready for the word of God. When you got it, say, I got it. If you still look and say, hold up. Okay. If you don't know where to look, don't be a hero. Go to the table of contents. Get that page number so we can hurry up and get out of here. Now hurry up. First Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 16. The Bible specifically says, rejoice evermore. Pray without ceasing. In everything, give thanks for this is the will of God in Jesus Christ concerning you. Quench not the spirit, despise not prophesying. I, I want you to think about the last two or three things that you really, really, really been trying to make happen, but it's been a grind. Maybe somebody's trying to open a business or perhaps you're going after that dream job or perhaps... You're just waiting on the doctor to give you a better report than he's been giving you. Whatever it is, everybody in this room has something you're waiting on God to do. Is that accurate? God told me to preach on this subject because I don't want you to get weary in your well-doing. For you will reap a harvest if you faint not. Give your neighbor a high five and say, neighbor, God says... Be grateful in the grind. That's, that's what we want to talk about today. Be grateful in the grind. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Y'all ready for this word? I'm going to give you two stories, and I want you to identify which one you fit in, and I want you to be honest. This is an open book test, but I want you to be honest, okay? I'm going to tell you two stories. I want you to tell me which person you are. Person A. I had a friend who called me. He's a well-known, well-established businessman. He called me one day and he um, started asking me, it was just a couple days ago, started asking me, so what do you think about the election? And I told him my opinion and he said, what do you think about all of the uh, cabinet selections and, and the difficulty that they're saying that um, you know, some of these guys will have and ladies will have in the confirmation period? And you know, I gave him my opinion on, on what I thought and then it, it, it got personal, and he started saying, yeah, and, and, and he calls me preach. He said, preach, I need you to pray for my mother. And I, and I said, okay, yeah. He said, you know, my mom's 84 years old, and I got to fly out, and I got to go take care of her. And, um, you know, immediately I started to feel bad because when somebody tells you that their 84-year-old mother uh, is doing bad and they have to go see them, you could only think 
uh, the worst. I'm, I'm going to be honest with you. I, I immediately thought the worst. And, and so he said, you know, I've got to go down there and I'll be back on Friday. I said, yes, sir. And uh, so I said, well, who's, is there anything I can do to help? And he said, no, but if it is, I'll let you know. I said, well, who's down there taking care of her when you're here? He said, oh, she, she lives by herself. I said, oh, okay. I said, um, you know, how is she getting back and forth to the doctor's appointment? He said, she drives herself. And she's in Vegas right now on a, on a friend trip. <laughs> I said, hold up, dog. You got me praying for a woman that's on the slot machine right now at 84 and still drive herself? But he's the kind of person that no matter how good things are, he always sees the negative in it. Meanwhile, I got a friend named Kevin who lives here in, in the city, and he's got one of the largest state farm uh, insurance companies in the state of Texas, and he's in the top 1% of financial planners in the United States of America. Meanwhile, his son and has been in the hospital for four months, and I've been praying for him every day because his son contracted a rare form of cancer and needed a bone marrow transplant. We're talking about a teenage son, by the way, needed a bone marrow transplant. And they thought it wasn't going to look good and that it may not come out all right because even though they knew what to do, they didn't have a donor for the marrow, only to find out that after an exhaustive search, the sister who slept in the bedroom next to him was a 100% match. And at no part in four months of praying for his son did Kevin ever say anything negative. He's my insurance agent. Every time I would call him on the phone, he would say these words like clockwork. If I called him right now and put him on speakerphone, he would have answered the phone this way. Hey, sir, how may I serve you? No matter what's going on in Kevin's life, he always is grateful. He's always grateful. And you can mistake thinking that because people are happy that the situation is full of joy. Now, here is the open book test. How many of you all fit in Kevin's group? And how many of you fit in my other friend's group that you see negativity even in the face of positivity? When he said it to me, I prayed for him. And when he said it, I think it was November the 13th, if I have the date correct, we were praying and he said, man, I want you to pray for my son because now he's been in the hospital for four months. He says, I think we're going to get out of here in 30 days. And I started to pray. I said, the devil is alive. And we started to call his son's name up in prayer. And his son got on the phone and started to tell me about how his taste buds had gone away and how he uh, had lost all functionality in his GI tract and how much he had gone through. This is a teenager talking about, but God is good. Yeah. 30 days out would be December 14th. But I call him back on the 15th. And he says, guess who just got discharged? <laughs> and he sent me a video of his son ringing the bell, telling cancer to go to hell where it belongs. The only thing that I could figure out between the two is both were going through hell and high water, but one of them chose to be grateful. Everybody just say to yourself, be grateful. Can I tell you something? This is what I learned, and I need your attention today because what I'm going to teach you, perhaps you've heard for the first time in your life. I never knew that gratefulness and gratitude was not a personality trait. Gratitude is a skill. Gratitude is a skill. And just like any other skill, it has to be practiced for you to be good at it. The reason why some of y'all are so good at being negative is because you practice at it every single day. My goal for you today is to recognize that the glass is not half empty. The glass is half full and that weeping may endure for a night. 
but everybody say joy comes in the morning. Gratitude is not a moment of thankfulness. Gratitude is a position of the heart. It's a heart posture. It's, it's a choice to focus on the goodness of God, even in the middle of the most difficult situations and circumstances. Gratitude then, listen, doesn't come naturally. I used to think that you could just decide to be grateful today and then just be grateful always. No, it's like a muscle. If you don't use it, it will fail you. It's like a muscle. If you don't work it out, it will be too weak to lift your burdens. You got to work gratitude the same way you do a bicep. You have to burn it out and then lift the weight and then change the weight and it's going to be ripped and it's going to be torn and it is going to burn. But you've got to understand that gratitude is not a personality trait. Gratitude is not a post on your social media. Gratitude is not a smile when you feel like difficulty is on your life. Gratitude is I've learned to be content in whatever state I am in. Do I have any witnesses in here today? Psychologist Paul Rosen and Edward Roisman created a concert, concept in 2021 called, listen to this, look it up when you get home, the negativity bias. There's an actual concept called the negativity bias, and here is what it means. They discovered that for most people, negative events are more memorable than positive, and that we as a people have a tendency to remember bad things 60% longer than good things which means that five good things could happen to you today. But if the strap on your shoe breaks, you're going to say you had a bad day. Oh, I'm talking to somebody right now. Have you know any of those people? The sun is shining. The sky is clear. They have a job. They got a little money in the bank. They got all of their health and strength, and they still talking about what their ex did in 2001. Why? Because people have a tendency to walk around rehearsing, nursing, and cursing their old additives as opposed to saying, this is the day that the Lord has made, and I'm going to rejoice and be glad in it. Talk to me, somebody, here today. I need everybody in here to stop what you're doing because I'm about to ruin the image that you used to. I want you to understand that I know who you are, not because I am different from you, but because I have at times been like you and understand how easy it is to walk around with your head down and despondent, not recognizing that you woke up this morning and that God put energy in your body and that some folks didn't make it, but you are one of the ones that did. You may not have a brand new car, but you ain't walking. You may not have steak in the refrigerator, but bologna will do just fine. Is there anybody in here want to thank God for the small things? Don't wait on the Bentley before you bless them. Bless them when you're on Metro. Talk to your boy. Don't wait on the bins to bless them. Bless them when you got to catch an Uber. Don't wait on the mansion to worship him. Worship him in that one bedroom apartment with old furniture and no couch. Bless them sitting on the floor. Bless them with no food in the refrigerator. Bless them when the job ain't paying you enough to make ends meet. I will bless the Lord when I got a job. I will bless the Lord at all times and his praise shall continuously. Can I get somebody to just talk to yourself and say, be grateful. But pastor, I just got divorce pay. B, you don't know what God doing and how he's working out. Pastor, somebody just broke my heart. Be grateful because they could have broke your jaw. Talk to me, somebody. Somebody say, be grateful. You complaining about what happened instead of thanking God that something else didn't happen. I'm going to give you three seconds for you to realize that God loves you so much that no matter how bad it is, it ain't as bad as the devil had planned it. Somebody shout, I'm grateful. Your memory for the negative is too long. When somebody hurts your heart, you can remember if it was raining. You can remember what they wore. You can remember what their breath smelled like on the day they broke your feelings. But the day somebody did something good for you, oh, I, it's foggy. I can't quite. 
You remember, you remember them good whoopings your mama gave you? You remember that? How I many? I got a couple of whoopings I'll never forget. Anybody here, raise your hand if you know. I remember the look in my mama's eyes when she came for me. I, I'm, I'm gonna tell y'all this one real bad. The worst whooping I ever got, Lord have mercy, and I got a lot of them. How many of y'all got whoopings as children? Mm-hmm. How many of y'all still whooping? Look at you, that's what's wrong with you. Just t- I got a whooping one time. <laughs> I got you, mama. You gotta catch me now. <laughs> One time, don't, don't judge me, don't judge me, don't judge me. So, I wanted to learn how to smoke. Didn't I just, did, what did I just say? Yeah, actually don't judge me. But, but I ain't had no, no money to get nothing. So I took some paper towels and rolled it up. I was in the bathroom like, <laughs> I had the whole scene, I was playing it out, I was smoking a paper towel took the paper towel, threw it in the garbage can in the bathroom. Garbage can caught on fire. But because of my skills, I was able to put the fire out before it did any damage. Not recognizing that the fire burned out the bottom of the garbage can. So for two weeks, I fooled my mama because I made sure the garbage can stayed right in the burn hole. And every day I said, Mama, I'll take the trash out. One day she said, Now, fool, I've been asking you to take the trash out for years and you never wanted to do it. She picks the garbage up and it ain't no bottom on it. Mama told me to lean over the couch. And she said the words of every famous black mama in America, I'm going to beat you until I get tired. Y'all remember that? And she commenced to beat me. And I looked at her and I said these words, thinking it was going to make her stop. I looked at her and said, Mama, my blood hurt. She said, fool, your blood hurt, and she commenced to continuing. And I ain't lit on no fire ever since then. But I'm, what, I'm, what I am getting at, what I am getting at is that in that moment, I had no idea how much danger I put my, I had my sisters, we were in a two-bedroom apartment on the second floor. I put my whole family at risk. I put the people beneath us at risk. It was in a trial level. I put the man above us in risk. And in my moment of chastisement that I deserved, I am appealing to her to give me a punishment lesser than the crime. And to this day, I remember it. I don't remember my fifth birthday. I don't remember my 12th birthday. I don't remember my 16th birthday. But I remember that whooping. Why? Because 60% of my memory was engaged in a negative activity and I've spent my whole life remembering something that lasted two minutes, forgetting things that could have lasted a lifetime. And many of you like me thought you didn't deserve it until you recognized that you deserved more. And instead of remembering the grace on your life, you remember the punishment that you deserved. And I want you to get into a place in your life right now where you understand that like God and Job, there will never be a thing in your life that is assigned to you that God would allow to destroy you without his permission. I don't care what you are going through. I don't care how hard life is hitting you. I don't care how low your money is. I don't care how high your bills are. When God decides that enough is enough, you're going to walk from a season of not enough to more than enough. But you have one responsibility between not enough and more than enough. You ready? Be grateful. Be grateful. Not just in more than enough. But you got to be grateful in I don't have. Y'all not talking to me today. Why? Because your mind will tell you. Are y'all listening? That pain feels worse than no pain feels good. Oh, you missed what I just said. Pain in our mind feels worse then no pain feels good. So what do we do with our pain? We keep it like it was passed on to us, like an heirloom. And here you are struggling with your mama's struggle. 
as if you had to take it as opposed to being the person in your generation that says whatever this is stops oh God help me in this place somebody say it stops with me so you're talking about your mama yelled a lot well you stop yelling if you got in trouble for everything, then start talking to your children and finding out, are you still enacting the same kinds of things? Because one thing I've learned is that when people have a complaint about something, we end up turning into the same thing that we despised. Somebody shout, be grateful. Say it again. Say, be grateful. It is easier. If I took, if I took at least 90% of you and put you on the stage right now, I bet you 90% of you would find the people in the audience who are not smiling right now immediately. And you wouldn't see the people who have smiles on their face. Why? Because we're trained to find the negative. We're trained to find the negative. And all we do is complain. How many of y'all, I can't stand a complaining spirit. Anybody know? The Bible even says this through Solomon. He says, it is better for a man. Now, if he, he should have said something else if he wanted me to say something else. But this is what Solomon said. <laughs> Solomon said, it is better for a man to live in a desert than in the house with a complaining woman. Okay, Google it. And then he turns around and says, oh, by the way, it is also better for a man to live on the house's rooftop than in the house with a complaining woman because God is the husband and he's telling the bride, I don't like complaining. Oh, you missed what I'm saying. You, you don't understand. God says, I have done too much for you to be walking around here talking about, hey, no, don't nobody love me. And, and, and all, all of my life I had to do is fight it. And I, I can't believe it. Some of y'all just come, look, just touch your neighbor and say, do you complain like that? Do you complain like that? Like, it don't matter what restaurant they go to. Ooh, the food ain't hitting like it used to hit. It ain't bussing, bussing. I mean, what's wrong with the food? It ain't hot like it was last time. Shut up! It's hot in here. Turn the temperature down. No, not that. Not that hot. It's cold now. How many of y'all know complainers? I went to Pizza Hut and they ain't put enough pepperonis on my pizza. And if you look online right now, you see people getting in whole fights about pickles on, on burgers. Just, just a complaining generation. No gratitude, no happiness, just complaint upon complaint upon complaint. And the scripture says in Psalms 103 verse 2, he says, bless the Lord. Oh, my soul, watch this, and forget not his benefits. Are y'all listening to me today? Forget means cease not to care. In other words, when the Lord blesses you, the way you bless him back is being grateful for whatever you got. Oh, my God, this is going to be a tough one, I can see. Watch this. The church at Thessalonica was one of the few churches that was still grateful in the earth at its time. And so as a result of being grateful no matter what, they received backlash from people who would rather be negative. Let me tell you something. For all of you nice people who have good hearts, you don't even know how much you irritate angry people. Really just look at her, just smiling for no reason at all. Just, just, just trying to get some attention. Look at her, just standing up and praising God for no reason. It don't take all of that. And, 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 and look at her, look at her, just look at her, 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 just look at her, check her. Would you just look at it, look at it, look at it. Just standing up, coming down to the front so people can see it. No, we're in worship. And anybody sitting around here looking like a lump on a log like you, looking all mad and ashy and angry. I want you to, matter of fact, I need everybody who's sitting next to somebody dry right now to shout until they crack. Just, just mess up their whole mood right now. I dare you look him in the face and say, you don't know what I've been through. I dare you sit up here and tell me that I got to sit down. This is the day that the Lord has made. I'm going to rejoice and be glad in it. And no, I ain't got no money. And no, I don't have a big house. And yes, I got bills, but I'm grateful because it could have been me outdoors with no food I could have been left alone without a friend or just another number but I want to thank you Lord for all you've done for me I'm going to give you 15 seconds to give them glory
Lord, don't even let me sit next to nobody negative at church next week. Matter of fact, we ought to have a negative section. It's outside. But as for me and my house, we're going to worship the Lord. So tell your neighbors, I had enough of your frown. All right, you, you, you're mad. We know it now, Mac. Now, can you change? You know, some people are going to stay mad until you acknowledge it. You know what I mean? They're just going to... Huh. Just going to be mad until you say what's wrong so they can say nothing. Paul wrote this letter to them. The church of Thessalonica, he wrote 1 Thessalonians to let them know you're going to receive backlash for being happy in spite of it all, but don't let negative people change your mood. Because if you get negative like them, who's going to help y'all? So, gratitude has to be practiced. So, everybody, let's practice right now. Smile. You got to use those muscles. Smile. Okay? You up here using that little rolling thing. Sm smile. You know, the little cold. Sleeping upside down so your gravity go the other way. Just smile. <laughs> I don't know what made me say that. <laughs> I have an issue. But I want you to maintain a joyful spirit. I'm not, I'm not saying that you're going to be happy all the time, but you ought to be able to find a way to turn that corner. I'm going to tell you something. Don't nobody want to be around you complaining all the time. And I'm going to tell you, as soon as you get away from them, they be like, ugh. Oh, she get on my nerve. If I ain't love her so much, I wouldn't talk to her again in my life. <laughs> oh, I want to hear your problems every day. I mean, with some of y'all, within two seconds, you write to the plane. How you doing? I'm good. But, oh, Lord, Jesus, just be grateful. Y'all ready for the hack? Number one, this is how you are grateful in the grind. He says, number one, rejoice evermore. Always. Some translation. Rejoice. Again, I say rejoice. Rejoice. Repeat, re, do it again, rejoice, okay? So when the Bible says rejoice in the Lord, again I say rejoice, the word re means to do again, which means after you do it, the only thing you, that's left to do is it. Word rejoice means it means it's a French word that means to be glad all right everybody say be glad. be glad and then evermore means in all circumstances and at all times so when the Bible says rejoice evermore he says I want you to be grateful in all things at all times which means if you are in a situation where there is no joy it's your job to find it Oh, you're missing it. He didn't say be grateful when you feel gratitude. He says be grateful in all things and what? At all times. I want you to think over your life and think about the circumstances where life literally took the joy out of you. And you thought that because it was this, you had a right to be frustrated. God says no. He says I want you to be grateful in all things at all times. Are you still listening? There is, listen to this, there is a misunderstanding that we believe that God wants us to act like bad things don't happen. So people tell you, you got to have faith. So you just got to walk around and act like everything is okay. That's not true because even God didn't do that. 
when the world was full of sin, God didn't act like we were not sinners. He, he let it rain 40 days and 40 nights. He repented God that he made man, and he washed us all away. And then what did he do? He started over. Why? Because God even has something to feel or say about things that are not going right. So he doesn't want you to pretend like nothing is going right. What he wants you to do is once you make a decision that this is messed up, make another decision on how you're going to fix it. Okay, so what was God's decision? I'm going to put Noah and his family in a boat, and I'm going to allow the eight of them to repopulate the earth. What I'm saying is, is that you have to be angry but sin not. You have to have a plan for your frustration. Okay, give me the same levels as the other mic. I, w I want you to have a plan for your frustration. So what are you going to do the next time somebody says something to you you don't like? Because if you react in a moment, it depends on how you feel. You have to have a plan for gratitude. Are y'all listening to me? Come on, don't, don't, go, don't go to sleep. Now the mic is done. We got to switch. Y'all back? You have to have a plan for gratitude. Everybody say have a plan for it. All right, so right now that your spirits are low, how are you going to lift them? What do we do? The Bible says we put on the, the garment of praise for the what? Spirit of heaviness. So when you feel heavy, you're supposed to counteract that with gratitude. Does that make sense? Y'all can't help them. Look at me. When you are heavy, you're supposed to put on gratitude. Are y'all listening to me? I got to get y'all back. I done lost the class. All right, class. Y'all want some bologna? Y'all want some goldfish? What I got to do to get your attention back? Everybody say, be grateful. God wants you to be grateful no matter how hard the grind is. He wants you to be grateful no matter how difficult the situation is. He wants you to be grateful when your job gives you a raise. He also wants you to be grateful when your job gives you a pink slip. Why? Because he wants the, you to let the job know, when I got the raise, it wasn't you. And when I got released, it wasn't you because all things... Work together for the good of them that love the Lord and are called according to his purpose. I'm going to read a scripture to you that most of you all have read. But I guarantee most of you all have not read it in its entirety. Now, finish this sentence for me. I can do. How many of you all know that scripture just by heart? All right. Now, let me give you the entire scripture. Philippians 4, 11 through 13. He says, not that I speak in respect of want, for I have learned in whatever state I'm in, there was to be what? Content. I know how to be abased and I know how to be abound. I know how to be full, but I also know how to act when I'm hungry. Listen to me. I know how to shout in success, but I can still give him glory in suffering. I can do all things through Christ that gives me strength. Y'all missed that whole thing. What God is saying is you have to have the same attitude no matter what the altitude is. God, can y'all get my other mic back working? It just needed batteries. Yes, sir. I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. So when, I, when, I, when I'm being laid off, I'm going to give them glory. When I'm getting a pay raise... I'm going to give him glory. When, when, when I'm in the hospital bed, I'm going to give him glory. When I'm ringing the bell and I'm released, I'm going to give him glory. When I'm at the altar getting married, I'm going to give him glory. When I get served divorce papers, I'm going to give him double glory. Y'all not listening to me. Because what you have to understand is no matter what it is, God is in control. You, you have to understand no matter what it is, God is making a way. You got to understand that no matter what it is, God is still on the throne. And he wants you to have a spirit of gratitude no matter what the circumstance is. Whether I'm full, I'm grateful. If I'm hungry, I'm grateful. If I'm single, I'm grateful. If I got a spouse, I'm grateful. If I'm waiting on having a child, I'm grateful. If I got five children, I'm grateful. If I got money in my pocket, I'm grateful. If I'm waiting in a welfare line, I'm grateful. If I got food stamps, I'm grateful. If I need to borrow money, I'm grateful. If my body's in pain, I'm grateful. If I feel good, I'm grateful. Why? Because nothing shall separate me from the love of God. I'm going to give you 15 seconds to be grateful for something other than yourself.
And he says, I can do all things through Christ that gives me what? He says, now, if I'm not able to find a way to be grateful in all things, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to pray without ceasing. I'm going to pray without ceasing. Everybody say cease. cease. The word cease is a word uh, meaning intermission. It, it's like halftime. It's like a break. He says, I'm going to pray without ceasing. Uh, it's not going to be intermittent. It's, it's going to be, it's going, it ain't going to be like Netflix on Friday. How many of y'all watch Netflix? Just you missed the whole fight because it was buffering the whole time. It's that, that's what intermittent means. The signal is intermittent. He says, he says, I'm going to pray without ceasing. Now, listen, when you hear that term, pray without ceasing, it doesn't mean that God expects you to walk around praying all day. I mean, we got some real holy people in the world. They walk around and you ask them, how you doing? Oh, blessed. I mean, just fine. Is, we'll do. But just, 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 just praying all day long. He doesn't mean that you have to walk around praying all day. What it means is that when you do pray, you leave the line of communication open so that when you're finished talking to God, God can turn around and talk back to you. How many of you all are guilty of telling God everything you want? And don't sit still long enough to hear what he got to say about it. God, I need some money. I need you to bless my children. I need you to do this. Amen. And then you sit back and wait. God says, no, this is not a monologue. This is a dialogue. Now, let me tell you what you're going to have to do. You're going to have to be grateful. You're going to have to be grateful. He says, pray without ceasing. I'm going to read a scripture to you that you've probably only read in King James or NIV, but probably never in the Message Bible. I want you to read this scripture over and over again. It is Proverbs 4 and 23, but I need you to read it in the Message Bible. Here is what it says. He says, watch over your heart. That's where life starts. He says, don't talk out of both sides of your mouth. Avoid careless gossip. See, this is, this is where a lot of you all get your negativity from because everybody you talk to don't do nothing but gossip. <laughs> Tap your name and say, wake up. Don't go to sleep now. <laughs> Always talking about somebody. But let me tell you something about people who talk to you about other people. As soon as you turn around, they talking to somebody else about you. Be careful with friendships that bond over gossip. People are trying to ascertain your trust by gossiping. And, and Lord knows these are the people you should, should definitely stay away from. This is, a, this is how you abort mission when they come to you talking about, now I got to tell you something, but you can't tell no, get, get, get away from me right now because if you tell me about somebody, especially somebody I love, I'm going to tell them as soon as we finish and then I'm going to tell them you told me. No, I'm the kind of friend that when somebody says, somebody told them, like, get them on the phone. Let, let's, let's all have a conference. Let's talk. Get them all on the phone, everybody. If you ain't got a three-way, go by a 10-way. We can get all, let's have a Zoom. Watch what he says. He says, keep your eyes straight ahead, ignore all sideways distractions, watch your step, and the road will stretch out smooth before you. Watch what he says, neither right nor left, leave evil in the dust. If you don't get away from evil people, they're going to continue to influence your mindset. And no matter how much rest you get, you're going to wake up tired because you're never going to get the kind of rest that gratitude gives you. I don't know if you know it, but you need to stop talking about people. And you need to stop letting people talk to you about other people. And let me tell you why this sin is so deadly. Because very rarely is it caught. Gossipers always gossip away from people. They always gossip in silos. And I don't know if you know it, but gossip is a sin. <laughs> and 
And this is the one we think don't have no consequences. But you'd be surprised how much you're dealing with because of whose mouth, whose your mouth is on. You, you'd, be, you'd be surprised at what issues that won't solve themselves in your life because you got your mouth on somebody that belongs to God. You'd be surprised at how many things God won't work out in your life because you got your mouth on somebody that you think they deserve. But let me tell you something. They God's daughter. They God's son. Let God deal with them. But you take your mouth. Touch not my anointed and do my prophet no harm. Y'all ain't hearing me today because I'm all up in your house. I'm telling you what your Kool-Aid is and the flavor. You better stop talking about people. You too trifling to be talking about people. You got too much going on in your own life to be talking about people. You too nasty to be talking about people. You ain't, you ain't good enough to be talking about nobody. Touch your neighbor and say, you need to shut your mouth. You around here trying to expose somebody and the light gonna turn on you. Be not deceived. God is not mocked. Whatever man sows. Touch somebody saying your Michael Jackson voice. Leave me alone. I'm about to give you one more step. He says, do this because it is the will of God. The opposite of the will of God is sin, which means when you are not grateful, you're sinning. Y'all need me to say that again? He says it in verse number 18. In all things give thanks for this is the will of God. For this is the will of God. For this is the will of God. The will of God is defined simply by what God wants. That's the will of God, what God wants. So, if being grateful is the will of God, then the opposite of what God wants is sin, which means that when I am not grateful... I am sinning and outside of the will of God. So every time you complain, you step out of the will of God. Who's learning something right now? You thought that complaint was a victimless crime. Not only to recognize today that when you complain, you remove yourself from the will of God. How dare you not be grateful to the one who sits high and looks low? How dare you not be grateful because you don't have what somebody else has? Whatever you have, you didn't deserve it anyway. Everybody say be grateful. God says in Numbers 11 and 1, the people complained. And when he heard them, his anger was aroused. When you complain, you frustrate God. And let me tell you something. I know one man you don't want to make mad. You don't want God mad at you because you won't find the spirit of gratitude. Help me, Jesus. God says, I've given you food. I give you shelter. I give you a reasonable portion of health and strength. I woke you up this morning. Yeah. I started you out on your way. Yeah. And you got an attitude at church because you couldn't find nothing to wear. <laughs> the devil is working through the portal of your complaint. And here you are. You don't cuss no more. You don't drink no more. You don't smoke no more. You think your whole life about to flip. And you're still going to be deep and down in the dumps because you done stopped everything, but you're still complaining. You're sober, but you complain. You're abstinent, but you still complain. You're doing all of the right stuff, but you still have no joy in your heart. God says, this is my will that you have life and have it more abundantly. It is my will that you have joy, unspeakable joy. And how are you going to represent me being that devilish and that hellish and that mean and that sophisticated in your complaint system? I need you to reflect my glory and be grateful. Lord, I know I ain't talking about nothing you want to hear, but I'm going to give you one more scripture. 
Philippians 2 and 14 says, do everything without grumbling. Amen. Not some things. Everything. Parent without complaining. Be a wife without complaint. Be a husband without complaint. You asked for the job and now you're complaining about the responsibility. You went to the altar and asked for that man. You gave your best offering that Sunday and been complaining ever since you got it. Oh, y'all ain't going to say, man, just say, ouch. Who, who feet I'm stepping on right now? Should have worn some combat boots. Everybody say gratitude. gratitude. Say it again, say gratitude. gratitude. Now, now, what's going to help you get the gratitude that you need is your relationship with the Holy Spirit. Now, this is where the church can use some development because we love Jesus. Oh, we love Jesus. We love Jesus. But when it's time for the conviction of the Holy Ghost to come up on us, now all of a sudden our doctrine changes. But you cannot have Jesus and not allow yourself to be pursued by the Holy Spirit. Touch me in this church, Lord Jesus. And how do I know it? He says, be thankful in all things and quench not the Spirit. That's what the whole mic mount function was about. The devil trying to quench the spirit because you were just getting ready to get a breakthrough and, and our breakthrough is so fragile that that sound messed it up. Some of y'all, I mean, right before the, the mic went out, you was ready to go. But we're, we're, see, we attend functions. We don't worship. No, no, no. I'm going to talk since y'all made me mad. Now nah, I'm going to make you mad. We, we attend a function, so the light got to work, the mic got to work, the, the screen got to work, everybody got to be still because we had a concert. But the moment you get distracted, now your spirit falls because you are not focused on the thing that we were supposed to be focused on. I wish I could throw these screens out and get rid of these lights and go back to old school fire baptized church where folk didn't need screens and organs and drums just to worship but all they needed was an indwelling presence of the Holy Ghost I was in church before there was a projector screen I was preaching the gospel before we had monitors everywhere. I was preaching the gospel before we had line arrays. I was preaching the gospel in a laundromat with no microphone. I preached in a laundromat for two years. I preached in a daycare center that they didn't clean up and left diapers in it. I had to clean up diapers before we had a worship. The first church that we ever rented didn't have heat in Indiana. And I preached when I saw the condensation coming out of my mouth still saying God was good. That was before my car was started. I had a 1991 Ford Escort. And after that, a 1986 uh, Lincoln Continental. Y'all don't know nothing about that. Talking about the one with the little wheel, the, the, the slanted wheel on the back. Y'all remember that one? It was brown, two-tone. You couldn't tell me nothing. Went there from a 1996 Buick Regal. Dual climate control, gray interior, turquoise on the outside. You couldn't tell me nothing. And none of it mattered because he died on Friday no matter what my car looked like. He rose on Sunday no matter what the audience looked like. I preached in front of 10 and I preached in front of 10,000. Not for the performance of it, but because I'm grateful to be called. Somebody shout, I'm grateful. Stop coming to church for a performance and come to give them glory. If the mic don't work, if the organist don't show up, if the choir is off key, I will bless the Lord at all times. Touch three people say this ain't no performance. Quench not the spirit. Quench not the spirit. Why does the Bible say quench not the spirit? Because the Bible says... That John said that there will be one who will baptize you by water. But there's another one coming. 
Oh, y'all gonna make me run out of here. I'm looking for my real church that will baptize you by the fire. Anybody ever been baptized in the fire of the Holy Ghost? I'm talking about that thing that make you run when ain't nobody chasing you. That thing that make you shout and quicken just at the thought of his name. Is there anybody in here that just loves God just because he's God? God, if you don't do nothing else, you've already done enough. If I don't eat another meal, I've already eaten enough meals. If I don't get a new car, I'll drive this one for the glory of God. Somebody ought to give him glory in the room. says quench not the Holy Spirit. Some of y'all getting ready to praise God right now and you sit next to people, they like to quench the Spirit because it, it's just, just too much. It don't take all of that. Look at them, look how they're looking at you right now. I wish you would sit down. You, you're blocking my view. I can't, I can't see it. It's, they, they're just doing too much, all of that. They faking it. It don't take all of that. Nobody got to do it. You don't know what I've been through. Don't tell me. Don't tell me what it takes. Slap your neighbor and say, period. You don't know what I've been through. I thought about killing myself. I thought about killing somebody else. I thought about doing some stuff that I didn't think I could get forgiven for. But by the grace of God, I'm here today. And so excuse me, but I got to get this thing out of me. Excuse me. I got to get this shot out of me. Excuse me. Last night was a tough night. But I woke up this morning with my mind stayed on Jesus. Excuse me, but I got to give him book. Don't nobody care nothing about your feet hurting. Kick them heels off and stand on your feet and give God glory. Don't nobody care nothing about your attitude. Stand up and shout until you lose your voice. You don't know my glory. You don't know my history. And you don't know my story. That's why I worship him in the field. And I worship him when I'm good. And I worship him when I'm down. And I worship him when I'm frustrated. And I worship him when I need money. And I worship him when I'm struggling. And I worship him when I don't feel good. And I worship him when I'm broken. I worship him. And you know why? Because my worship is for real. I ain't doing this to get no attention. I'm not doing this because you next. I don't even know you here. It's about me and him. Somebody shall give God the glory. You standing next to somebody who's been convicted of something. They should be in jail right now. That's the great thing about standing in a crowd of folks. You don't know what they've been through. And you sit next to them and you think that, that they're standing next to you shouting because everything is well. You standing next to somebody who's been through real hell, who's been through real high water, who struggled, barely making it. And you sitting up there that had a smooth life with your mouth closed. I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. Open up your mouth and give God glory. I need every Christian in here to touch somebody and say, I can't resist them. I can't resist them. I can't resist them. I tried to keep my mouth closed, but the more I call them, the better I feel. I can't resist him. I told myself I wasn't going to do all of that today. I ain't got no shouting shoes on. I came to be cute today, but I'm about to kick these mugs off like Patty LaBelle because when I think of the goodness of Jesus and all that he's done, Somebody said, I feel better. I feel better. I feel better since I laid my burdens down. I feel better. I got to get this point out. Somebody shout, quench not the spirit. Fire has three elements. It's called the triangle of fire. It needs oxygen. It needs an accelerant. All right? So some sort of fuel. Are y'all listening to me? All right. And so when you have it, I want you to hear me. I want you to hear this. Whenever fire burns its brightest, it's because it has plenty of oxygen. Any, anybody in here uh, ever barbecued and, 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 you, and you close the top of it, you, you got to open the vent. Because if you don't open the vent, the oxygen can't get in. Now, I'm talking about the old school. I know y'all got them nice new ones with propane. I'm talking about the one you get from Walmart. Come on, talk to me, somebody. It's about $20. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. And, and, and you go get, you get some, some charcoal, but you ain't good like that. So you got to get the charcoal that got lighter fluid already inside of it. Now, don't act like you're that good. And, 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 and if, you open, if you open it, the oxygen can get in. It's the same way with the candle. You light a candle, put the lid on it. 
You ain't got but a couple of seconds before the flame goes out because in order to keep a flame going, it needs breath. Oh my God. I think about three people over here got it. In order for a flame to continue to go, it's got to have oxygen. No wonder the Bible says, let everything that has breath, because when you are praising God, you activate the Holy Spirit. Y'all not listening in this place today. I'm going to give you about three seconds to think about five things that God has done for you. And I want you to put some breath on it. And do me a favor, give your neighbor a high five. And shout, neighbor, whatever you do, let it burn, let it burn, let it burn, let it burn. Oh, y'all ain't gonna hurt, y'all ain't gonna worship in here. Tell somebody, let it burn. Tell somebody else, let it burn. We got three minutes and I need you to find your praise partner because we about to tear the club up. All right, now if you're standing next to somebody, they ain't talked to you all day, promise you they ain't gonna start right now. So what I want, some of y'all might have to borrow a partner, all right? Just tell your neighbor, I need to borrow your partner because they've been lit all service. All right, y'all ready? Over the next 15 seconds, I'm going to give you time to think about two things. That if God didn't do it, it wouldn't have been done. And if people knew your real story, they break down in this floor crying right now. Now I want you to show them how a survivor worships. Let me touch her. Come here, come here. Bring her here. Oh, good up. I feel the glory of the Lord. Something's about to grow. Oh. God told me, don't be ashamed. I need somebody in this room to give your neighbor a high five and say, neighbor, let it burn. Shout, 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 shout. Open your mouth and give God the praise. Uh, I feel the glory of the Lord. Grab a neighbor by the hand. Oh, yeah. And shout, neighbor, when I think of the goodness of Jesus and all he's done for me, my soul shouts hallelujah. Ooh, I feel something about to happen. I feel something about to happen. God says put on the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. I dare you over the next 15 seconds, clap your hands, oh ye people. Lift up a voice of triumph and give God the glory. You don't know like I know uh, what the Lord has done for me. Uh, shall I yeah. I feel the glory of the Lord in this place. I feel the glory of the Lord. I said I feel the glory of the Lord. I said I feel the glory of the Lord. I said I feel the glory of the Lord. I said I feel the glory of the Lord. Touch somebody, say, let it burn. Let it burn. Let the Holy Ghost do his work. You need to stop trying to be cute and let God arrive and his enemies be scattered. Come on, let the Holy Ghost do his work. You still sitting there trying to be cute. You still sitting there like he ain't never done nothing. You still some of y'all some of y'all need to put some running in your feet some of y'all need to put some clapping in your hands shout yeah 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 y'all still playing this part of the service ain't for the folk that's trying to maintain their makeup this part of the service ain't for the watchers this part of the service is for people 
that lacked Shadrach and Meshach found himself in the fiery furnace. But I see a fourth man in the fire and it looks like the Son of God. Are y'all praying with me? Grab a neighbor by the hand for the last time. Look him in the eye and say, neighbor, when I release your hand, it's a symbol that everything you carried in here is being released. I'm releasing you to be happy. I'm releasing you to be free. I'm releasing you to be healthy. I'm releasing you to be whole. I'm releasing you to have joy, unspeakable joy. And when I let your hand go, I want you to shout like it's already done. On the count of three, one, Somebody already said, I can't wait, I can't wait, I can't wait. I can't wait, I can't wait. Two. Let that hand go and shout. Yeah. Yeah. I should have been dead, sleeping in my grave. I should have had a heart attack, but thanks be to God. even know how it's going to turn out. <laughs> but I'm grateful. This could be my last Sunday. But I'm grateful. I want to come back next week and a thousand more weeks after that. But if this is it, no, I'm going out grateful. I'm grateful because I got more than I deserve. I got more than I had coming. And what I did deserve, he didn't let it happen. So come what may, I'm grateful. If I lose the house today, they can have it. It ain't gonna take my joy.
You want the car? Come get it. But you can't take my joy. If I have to wear this suit every Sunday for the rest of my life, I will show up right here with no embarrassment. Because I ain't come here for you. I came because he sent me. I'm grateful. You should have seen where I started. So one, one thing I've learned, where I started has done more for me than where I am. You may not believe it, but I know what it means to be abased. <laughs> I done struggled more days than I have not. Are you listening to me? I had more broke days than I ever had days where I wasn't. Hmm. I know what it's like. I know what it's like. I ain't no foreigner to struggle. In fact, I've struggled so much in my life, I thought that was the only way to live. I ain't had nobody in my family as no example of somebody who didn't struggle. Every family member I had was trying to figure it out. I don't know where you come from, and I ain't saying nothing wrong with it. God bless you if you had an easier road, but I ain't have one. And quite frankly, sometimes I wish I did. But at this stage of my life, I wouldn't trade nothing. Nothing. I'm just thinking about it. Nothing. I'm grateful.